Good morning, St. Paul School of Theology community. It is wonderful to be with you on this All Saints Chapel Day. We are very grateful for Father Aidan Wilson in Oklahoma City at St. Francis of the Woods, who is leading us in uh, a, a more orthodox liturgy today than some will be accustomed to. Um, so know that we have uh, slides uh, Father Aiden is also very much a pedagogue. He's a teacher, so he will guide you along through this liturgy. Um, and uh, yeah, just immerse yourself in the spirit of this liturgy as we go through worship today. A reminder for those of you who are at home that this is a communion chapel service. So if you haven't already, please do make sure you have elements with you. And uh, other than that, we will begin worship with a invitation to silence and stillness. Blessed is the universe of the source and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Glory to you, O Creator, Creator, glory to you. O heavenly grace, the Comforter, Spirit of Truth, you are in all places and fill all things. Treasury of good things and giver of life, come and dwell in us and cleanse us from every stain and save us, O gracious one. Holy, holy God, God, holy mighty, holy, mighty, holy immortal, immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. All Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Release us from our illusions of separation. Pardon our iniquities. Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for your namesake. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. Glory to the Source and to the Son and, and to the, the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, now, now and, and ever, ever and, and unto ages of ages. Of ages. Amen. Sing of the raven, bird of creation, birthing the world, unfolding her wings, calling her children, forming a nation. Crying tomorrow, hear what it brings. Sings of the stories told by the elders. Tales of the prairie, songs of the sea. Sing of the Hopi, Blackfeet and Moe. Cheyenne, Apache, Navajo, Cree. Sing of Iona, Isle of the Ocean, Going and eagle, soar in the sky. Stones of high crosses, telling their story. 
Christ in his glory dies but to rise. Sing of Columba, Patrick and Hilda, Brigid and Aidan, some without name. Sing of high places, sacred the oak tree, deep holy wells, and bright Easter flame. Wide are the oceans flowing between us. High are the mountains soaring above. Yet the Great Spirit forming creation calls us together, one in God's love. Great Spirit, East. This way is East. We have to figure out the way it is East. Great Spirit of Light, come to us out of the East with the power of the rising sun. Let there be light in our words. Let there be light on our path that we walk. Let us remember always that you give the gift of a new day, and never let us be burdened with sorrow by not starting over again. Be among, be among us, great, great spirit, spirit of light. light. Great spirit of love, come to us with the power of the north. Make us courageous when the cold wind falls upon us. Give us strength and endurance for everything that is harsh, everything that hurts, everything that makes us squint. Let us move through life ready to take what comes from the north. Be, be among, among us, great spirit, spirit of love. Great life-giving spirit, we face the west, the direction of sundown. Let us remember that every day, the moment will come when our sun will go down. Never let us forget we must fade into you. Give us a beautiful color. Give us a great sky for setting, so that when it is our time to meet you, we can come with glory. Be among us, great life-giving spirit. Great spirit of creation, send us the warm and soothing winds from the south. Comfort and caress us when we are tired and cold. Unfold us like the gentle breezes that unfold the leaves on the trees. As you give to all the earth your warm, moving wind, give to us so that we may grow close to you in warmth. We did not create the web of life. We are but strands in it. Whatever we do to the web, we do to ourselves. Great, be among us, great spirit of creation. Creator of all, we give you thanks for all that you are and all that you bring to us with your creation. You are the center of the sacred circle through which all creation is related. Lift our minds and our hearts above this earth so that we may see it as one place one land, one home for all. Give us grace to live together with respect and love as we grow in your spirit, for you are the lover of all, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Word of Solomon, Wisdom of Solomon 3, 1 through 9. But the souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, and no torment will ever touch them. In the eyes of the foolish, they seem to have died, and their departure was thought to be a disaster, and their going from us to be their destruction, but they are at peace. For though in the sight of others they were punished, their hope is full of immortality. Having been disciplined a little, they will receive great good. 
because God tested them and found them worthy of himself. Like gold in the furnace, he tried them. And like a sacrificial burnt offering, he accepted them. In the time of their salvation, or I'm sorry, in the time of their visitation, they will shine forth and will run like sparks through the stubble. They will govern nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord will reign over them forever. Those who trust in him will understand truth, and the faithful will abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are upon his holy ones, and he watches over his elect. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and all who dwell therein. For it is he who founded it upon the sea and made it firm upon the rivers of the deep. Who can ascend the hill of the Lord and who can stand in his holy place? Those who have clean hands and a pure heart, who have not pledged themselves to falsehood, nor sworn by what is a fraud. They shall receive a blessing from the Lord, and a just reward from the God of their salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek him, of those who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, lift them high, O everlasting doors and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your hands, O gates, lift them high, O everlasting doors and the King of glory shall come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. Glory, glory. to the to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Now, now and ever, and, and, and unto ages, ages, ages of ages. Amen. Amen. And now a reading on death from the prophet by Khalil Gibran. You would know the secret of death, but how shall you find it unless you seek it in the heart of life? The owl, whose night-bound eyes are blind unto the day, cannot unveil the mystery of light. If you would indeed behold the spirit of death, open your heart wide unto the body of life. For life and death are one, even as the river and the sea are one. In the depth of your hopes and desires lies your silent knowledge of the beyond. And like seeds dreaming beneath the snow, your heart dreams of spring. Trust the dreams, for in them is hidden the gate to eternity. Your fear of death is but the trembling of the shepherd when he stands before the king whose hand is to be laid upon him in honor. Is the shepherd not joyful beneath his trembling that he shall wear the mark of the king? Yet is he not more mindful of his trembling? For what is it to die but to stand naked in the wind and to melt into the sun? 
And what is it to cease breathing, but to free the breath from its restless tides, that it may rise and expand and seek God unencumbered? Only when you drink from the river of silence shall you indeed sing. And when you have reached the mountaintop, then you shall begin to climb. And when the earth shall claim your limbs, then shall you truly dance. Reading from the Revelation of St. John, chapter 21, 1-6a. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them as their God. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. And then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Christ, they glory to you. you. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and there was a stone laying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out with his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to him, said to them, unbind him and let him go. The gospel of Christ. Glory to you, O Christ. Glory to you. Good morning. I'm very pleased to be with you this morning. Um, I was humbled to be invited and also a little humored. I'm not much of a preacher um, and uh, the invitation was to preach for All Saints Day and it's also not All Saints Day in the Orthodox tradition, but um, I was very excited and honored to be able to celebrate um, All Saints with my uh, Methodist brothers and sisters. So it's an honor to be here. Um, I am a bishop in the Ecumenical Orthodox Catholic Church in America, the EOCCIA, or just a slightly shorter acronym. We descend from the first attempt to create an American Orthodox Church, uh, or rather unite the Orthodox Churches in America. 
Um, it was started in the 1920s, uh, and the first archbishop was Aftimius Ophish, a Syrian who was under Russian jurisdiction. Unfortunately, for various reasons, including um, the communist revolution in Russia and our first archbishop's decision to get married, uh, it threw the canonical status of our church into chaos, and the church never really achieved that vision of creating a united American Orthodox Church. But thankfully, out of that death, God gave new life and a new vision. And in the 1970s, Bishop John Adair, who was the presiding bishop at the time, felt called to a more inclusive and ecumenical form of Eastern Orthodoxy, which is pretty rare in Orthodox churches. Um, so the charism of our church is to bring the holy mysteries of the East to people of any background, not seeking to convert, but rather to enrich and enliven the spiritual lives of people of many traditions. One of the great mysteries of Eastern Christianity is our understanding of salvation which occurs not as a specific point in time, but as an eternal journey toward union with God. We call this process theosis. The saints are those whom the church has acknowledged as being on this theosis journey, people who reflect the divine image most clearly as an example for us. But the saints are not merely a monolith of holy people. They reflect the vast diversity of the human family, and each is a unique image bearer of God. The early martyrs were the first to be recognized as saints, but now there are several categories of saints in Orthodoxy. There are the great martyrs, those who were tortured and killed for the faith. There are confessors, those who were tortured but not killed. There are theologians, although the Christian East has only recognized three in the 2,000-year tradition of our church. Um, St. John the Evangelist, who wrote the Gospels. St. Gregory Nazianzus, one of the Cappadocian fathers who helped uh, delineate the theology of the Trinity. And St. Simeon, the new theologian. There are the equal to the apostles those who helped build up the church. Notably among them are St. Mary Magdalene and St. Fotini, whom you all probably know as the Samaritan woman at the well. According to Orthodox tradition, she became a ardent uh, evangelist for Christianity and was martyred by the Emperor Nero. There are the unmercenaries uh, of category that I find particularly appealing, who are healers and physicians who tended to the sick without charging them, a kind of precursor to universal health care. <laughs> and there are my personal favorites, the fools for Christ, the holy men and women who gave up everything, rejected societal conventions to be true to their faith. In the West, the best example is St. Francis of Assisi, whom was the son of a wealthy cloth merchant, but gave up a life of luxury in order to be a beggar and live off the subsistence of others, giving away half of what he accumulated, even in begging, to the poor. His first order for his followers uh, required them to own no possessions other than a robe and sandals. They weren't even allowed to own a book. The rule was loosened um, by the time he died, um, but to his lament. Another fool for Christ was one of Francis's first followers, Brother Juniper. And it's said that Brother Juniper was so willing to give away what he had that the other brothers in the monastery had to keep eyes on him so he didn't give away the clothes he was wearing and run around naked. Um, we are all called to be saints, but imitating others, even holy people, doesn't make us holy. We are holy 
We are whole when we most clearly reflect the divine image that each of us carry. We are holy when we are most truly ourselves. One of the things we like to say in orthodoxy is that no one is saved alone. The human family in all its diversity is the community of God. And it is through community that we make this journey toward union with our creator. This community includes and extends beyond the walls in which we gather for worship. This community includes us here and now and extends to all who have gone before us and all who will come after us. This is one of the beautiful things about the communion of saints, the great cloud of witness. They are not just historical figures or past heroes of the faith. They are and forever will be included in the present community of God. We believe that they pray for and with us, and that they are mystically present with us, especially every time we gather for Eucharist. In this, the greatest mystery of the church, we mystically participate in Christ's saving act across time and space. We are united with all who around the world participate now, and all who have participated in the past, and all who will participate in the future. In this great mystery, God is reconciling all things and all people in Christ. If we take this hope to heart, if we do the work to know and reflect the divine image within each of us, who knows, one day maybe our names will appear on the list of holy fools for Christ. And we too will be counted in the great cloud of witness. By doing our part in the good work of bringing life and love to a world clouded in darkness. So may we remember this time of year as sacred space. May we rejoice in the unity of our human family, both those who have gone before us and those who are alive with us now and even those whom we love but see no more will be included in the community of God as his saints. Amen. Amen. I mentioned briefly that the EOCCIA was the first attempt to create a unified American Orthodox Church, but most of the Orthodox churches don't consider us Orthodox anymore. We've strayed from our um, original um, vision as a strictly Eastern Orthodox Church into an ecumenical community that brings Orthodoxy to people of various backgrounds. And so the liturgy that we use most Sundays at St. Francis of the Woods is an amalgamation of uh, the Orthodox liturgy of the East and more typical liturgies of the West. Um, the strict Orthodox liturgy is the divine liturgy of John Chrysostom, which is done entirely in chant. But I thought that might be a little extreme for you this morning. Um, so most of the liturgy that we'll do is um, just spoken. Um, but thank you to our chanter for chanting the psalm for us. That was very beautiful. The next part of the liturgy is the prayers for the departed. This is a blend of both the Eastern Orthodox uh, liturgy for funeral rites and for memorial services, and also the prayers for the departed from the Episcopal tradition from the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. God of all spirits and of all flesh, who has rent the veil between the living and the dead and trampled down death by your life-giving death on the cross, give rest to the souls of the departed in a place of light, a place of green pasture, in a place of refreshment, where all pain, sorrow, and sighing have fled away. For you are the resurrection, the life, 
and the repose of the departed, O Christ our God. And to you we give glory with your eternal source, who is without beginning, and your all holy, good, and life-giving spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Amen. We ask and entreat your goodness, O lover of humankind. Remember, O good one, the souls of your children who have fallen asleep, our mothers and fathers, sisters and brothers, and all those whom we now name. You're welcome to name aloud those whom you loved who have departed this life. Francis, Elwood, Suellen, TJ, Carolyn, Becca, Colin, Laura, and Carol, Graciously, O Creator, repose their souls in a place of green pasture, by the water of rest, in the paradise of joy, the place out of which grief, sorrow, and groaning have fled away in the light of your saints. Lord, have, Lord, mercy. have mercy. Raise up their bodies also on the day which you have appointed according to your true promises. Lord, Lord, have, Lord have, mercy. have mercy. Grant them the good things of your promises, that which eye has not seen nor ear heard, the things which you, O God, have prepared for those who love you. For there is no death, but only transformation. Lord, have mercy. O good one and the lover of humankind, graciously accord your servants who are in the whole world, from east to west, and from north to south, repose and save them. Lord, have mercy. Christ, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for our departed loved ones, and dry the tears of those who weep. Lord, have mercy. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. Lord, have mercy. You raised the dead to life. Give our loved ones eternal life. Lord, have mercy. Comfort us in our sorrows. Let our faith be our consolation and abundant life our hope. Lord, have mercy. Source of all, we pray to you for all those whom we love but see no longer. Grant to them eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. May their souls and the souls of all the departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. So just God who pours out his grace upon his priests as we're upon the head that runs down the beard, the beard of Aaron that runs down the border of Israel. Your priests, O Lord, shall clothe themselves with righteousness, and your saints shall rejoice with joy always, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. The anaphora or Eucharistic prayer that we are about to pray together comes from the Divine Liturgy of St. John Chrysostom, but is much abridged um, and will be spoken rather than chanted. One thing that I would like to tell you about, although you probably can't see it on Zoom, is that in the Orthodox tradition, we use an altar cloth called an antiminison, uh, which in Greek means something like instead of the altar. Um, it contains within it the relics of a martyr. Um, 
in remembrance that the early church was built over the tombs of the martyrs and that the martyrs in that were mystically participating in the Eucharist with those who gathered. Um, and so the Antiminicin is a reminder in the Orthodox tradition of our roots and also of that beauty of the communion of the saints who are mystically present with us each time we gather for Eucharist. We also, in Orthodoxy, always mix a little bit of water into the wine or grape juice in this instance um, for Eucharist in remembrance of Christ's crucifixion when his side was pierced and water and blood came out. But it's also a remembrance that Eucharist is an act of restoration. We are in a mystery putting Christ back together. We in the Orthodox tradition usually put the bread into the chalice also, mingling Christ's body and blood together. Um, and Eucharist is seen as an act that not only restores us to spiritual health, but also symbolically puts Christ back together. Let us stand aright, let us stand with awe, let us attend that we may present the holy offering in peace. A mercy of peace, a sacrifice of praise. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us lift up our hearts. We'll have them with the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord. It is, it is meet and right. right. It is meet and right to bless you, to praise you, to give thanks to you and to worship you in all places. For you are the creator God, ineffable, inconceivable, invisible, incomprehensible, ever existing and eternally the same. You and your only begotten Son and your all Holy Spirit, you brought us from non-existence into being, and when we had fallen away, you raised us up again. You left nothing undone until you had led us to heaven and granted to us your commonwealth of peace. For all this, we give thanks to you and to your only begotten Son and to your all Holy Spirit, for all that we know and do not know, for blessings manifest and hidden that have been bestowed upon us. We thank you also for this liturgy, which you have deigned to receive from our hands, even though thousands of archangels and tens of thousands of angels stand around you. The cherubim and seraphim, six-winged, many-eyed who soar aloft, singing the triumphal hymn, exclaiming, proclaiming, and saying, Holy, 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 holy one, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Creator. Hosanna in the highest. Together with these blessed powers, Creator who loves humankind, we also exclaim and say, Holy are you and most holy, you and your only begotten Son and your all Holy Spirit. You loved the world and your only begotten Son gave himself so the world through him should not perish but have life everlasting. When he had come and fulfilled for our sake the entire plan of salvation, on the night in which he was given up, or rather gave himself up for the life of the world, he took bread in his holy, pure, and blameless hands, in giving thanks and blessing he hallowed and broke it and gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you for the remission of sin. Amen. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the remission of sin. Remembering this saving commandment and all those things which have come to pass for us, 
the cross, the tomb, the resurrection on the third day, the ascension into heaven, the enthronement at the right hand, and the second coming in glory. Your own of your own we offer unto you on behalf of all and for all. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, O our God. Once again, we offer you this spiritual worship without the shedding of blood, and we beseech, pray, and entreat you, send down your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts here presented, and make this bread the precious body of your Christ. Amen. And that which is in this cup, the precious blood of your Christ. Amen. Amen. Changing them by your Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 So that they may be for those who partake of them, for vigilance of soul, remission of sin, communion of the Holy Spirit, fullness of the kingdom of heaven, boldness before you, not for judgment or condemnation. Again, we offer you this spiritual worship for those reposed in the faith. Fathers, mothers, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, ascetics, and every righteous spirit made perfect in faith. Especially for our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady Theotokos, our mother Mary. We will sing together the hymn to the Theotokos, which we have set to the tune you are my sunshine. All of creation rejoices in you. Theotokos, full of grace, hallowed temple, holy mother, ranks of angels sing your praise. God of the ages became incarnate and made your womb as vast as space. Now all creation rejoices in you. Theotokos, full of grace. For those who are not familiar, Theotokos in Greek means God-bearer, and I love that as a title for the Virgin Mary. It not only reminds us that she bore Christ, the incarnate God, in the world, but it is also an invitation to each of us to be Theotokoses to the world, to bear God to one another. Grant us, Creator with boldness and without condemnation, to dare call you the heavenly God, Father and Mother of us all, and to say, Eternal Spirit, Earth Maker, Pain Bearer, Life Giver, Source of all that is and that shall be, Father and Mother of us all, Loving God in whom is heaven, the hallowing of your name echoes through the universe. The way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the earth. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and test, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Peace be with you. And also with you. Let us bow our heads to the Creator. To you, O Creator. We give thanks to you, O lover of humankind. 
By your infinite power, you fashioned the universe, and by your great mercy, you brought all things from non-existence into being. O Creator, look with favor upon those who have bowed their heads before you. For they have not bowed before flesh and blood, but before you, the awesome God. Distribute, O Christ, these gifts you offered unto all of us for good, according to the individual need of each. Sail with those who sail, travel with those who travel, by land, by sea, by air, and by space. Heal the sick, O great physician of our souls and bodies. By the grace, mercy, and love for us of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your all-holy, good, and life-giving Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Amen. O Christ, who sits on high with the Father and is also invisibly present among us, by your loving hand impart to us your most pure body and most precious blood, and through us to all creation. Amen. Amen. The holy things are for the holy. Unite us in this, this mystery. mystery. We, we who are, are many are one body, for we all share in the, in the one bread and the one, one cup. In the awe of God with faith and love, draw near. God, save your people and bless your inheritance. Let us affirm the mystery of incarnation. Christ, Christ is, is in you. you. Christ, Christ is in me. me. Christ, Christ is the light by, by which, which we see. see. Christ, Christ is, is in all creation. creation. We thank you, O God, for the communion of your holy, most pure, immortal, and heavenly mysteries, which you have granted to us for the benefit, sanctification, and healing of our souls and bodies. Grant, creator of all, that the communion of the holy body and blood of Christ may become for us faith unashamed, love unfeigned, fullness of wisdom, healing of soul and body, repelling of every hostile adversary, observance of your commandments, and a good defense of the judgment seat of Christ. For you are our sanctification, and to you we ascribe glory, to the Source, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Amen. May he who rose from the dead, Christ our true God, through the prayers of his most pure mother, of St. John the Baptist, St. Francis, St. Clare, and all the saints, have mercy on us and keep us, for he is good and loves humankind. Let us say together St. Clare's blessing. 
Live without fear. Our Creator has made us holy, has always protected us, and loves us as a mother. Let us go in peace to follow the good road, and may God's blessings be with us always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.